Welcome back. Now that you have more of an understanding on the basics, we'll look at generating curtain wall facade for a building using Rhino inside. Taking the grids we generated in the last video, I'm going to draw a curve which will define the outer edge of this building. I can sketch this in Rhino and again get an automatic preview of this curve within Revit. I've created a script which takes the level values and generates a series of curtain panels which will define the facade of the building. A little bit of grasshopper randomization picks whether a panel should be defined as a glass panel or an aluminium panel, each with a varying thickness. I've also defined a series of mullions at each vertical curtain wall join. I won't go through this script in detail, but you can download it from the tutorial section of our technical website. There'll be a link below. To define these curtain wall panels and mullions, I'm using standard Geometry Gym components found in the Geometry Gym Revit plugin. You can view these objects within the Rhino preview and the basic Rhino geometry within Revit. Once I'm happy with the facade location, I can use the Bake to Revit component again to send the newly created objects to Revit. This could take some time in the first one because it's building families in the background. I can then again start to manipulate this curve in Rhino and start to get real-time feedback on where changes are being made in the script. Once you've done some tweaks in Rhino, you can go back and rebake the geometry to Revit. I can turn off the Grasshopper preview to get a better view in, in Revit. It is worth noting that this direct bake to Revit process uses the same transfer mechanism as the previous save and import workflow and generates an IFC GUID to the object which will allow the object to be updated if it is moved within Rhino or Grasshopper. This is an advantage with the Geometry Gym workflow as elements can be updated rather than being replaced each time you bake, killing any linked information such as tags. However, you can remove this in Revit if you'd like to have a more, little more control over what is updated and what is not. For example, if I know I want this panel to not be glass, I can remove the GUID from it and then it will not be updated as part of the rebaking process. Be careful in this instance though, as duplication of the panels could occur. Once the objects are generated, I should be able to manipulate them like any other Revit framing element. 